decades, Washington, D.C.'s rivers have suffered from severe pollution. Storm waters can overwhelm the ancient sewer system in the nation's capital. All right, but we got a major project taking place below the city's infrastructure, 10 to 15 stories below ground to be exact. All right, joining us live to talk about this, D.C.'s $2.6 billion Clean Rivers Project is George Hawkins. He's the general manager of D.C. Water. George, first of all, tell us uh, why this project. It's a big one. It's a huge one. It's the largest public works project in Washington, D.C. at the moment, and most people, of course, don't see it. We're so far underground. <clears throat> it's a problem that 750 cities in the United States have, which is when sewers were built about a century ago. Those wow. sewers take both sanitary flow from a building and the stormwater that rushes off the street in every storm into the same pipe. So it's called a combined sewer. The problem with that system is in a big storm, you see all that water rushing into the storm drain is it overwhelms the system. System and a combination of that stormwater and sewage overflows directly to rivers or in some cases to streets and to, and to, and to basements. So we're mm. building a gigantic system underground, 23 feet interior diameter tunnels, 13 miles of them that will take that overflow and bring them down where I sit today, which is the Blue Plains Advanced Wastewater Treatment Plant, the largest facility of its kind in the world. All right, so you're going to run 13 miles, right, of these tunnels, and you'll separate out the stormwater from the, the sewer water. They're deep, right? They're deeper than the metro. Why so deep? Well, we, this is called soft ground tunneling. We want to go underneath everything else that simplifies the whole tunneling pro, uh, process. And actually, all of that flow, will it's all by gravity. So this is designed and interesting. The funding that we use to support this with our ratepayers is a century bond, the first time of its kind, because this apparatus is designed to have a minimum useful life in Washington, D.C. of at least a century. In my view, these tunnels will be in place for as long as Washington, D.C. is a capital city, sort of like the Roman aqueducts. So we're building something for the yeah. generations, which will take this flow deep underground, underneath everything else, so we don't have any conflicts with anyone else's infrastructure. Comes down here to Blue Plains, one of the largest pump stations in the world. We'll pump all that flow back to the surface, and it will get world-class treatment here before that goes back to the Potomac uh, as an ultimate destination. All right, so, George, this started in 2005. It's going to be completed 20 years later, 2025. Did you guys look at climate change, uh, potential sea level rise, population increase, things like that when you were doing this? Sure. <clears throat> we have a, an interesting analog because all of this is about managing stormwater. And there's two ways to do it. One is in a big concrete system underground that has a lot of volume, but it's very fixed. And you're talking about what about variations in what we use. Right. And we're also building green infrastructure on the streets of the city, which can contain stormwater at the surface rather than underground. And that we can add to over the years. So we do have a flexible mode of stormwater management, as well as this deep fixed system underground. The two together are the best. George Hawkins, thank you so much. That was a you know really was solid plan. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Maybe a role model too for yes, other for cities. Yes, for other cities. Right? Right. A lot of infrastructure problems out there.